Bibles with me to the Gospel of Luke at chapter 2. And I want to commence reading in verse number 25 through verse 35. And I want to preach about Christmas anytime. <laughs> Luke chapter 2, commencing in verse number 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Verse 35 reads, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Thank you. You may have your seats. <clears throat> the grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Unless you, like myself, at times have separation anxiety, you have taken down the Christmas lights, you've put away the wreaths and the Turkey and dressing has been eaten. Gifts have been given and received. All the shopping has been done. That lime green scarf that you received <laughs> is going in the drawer with that bright orange one you got last year. to be re-gifted for somebody who is unsuspecting. <laughs> All of the bags have been put away, the boxes have been burned, wrapping paper has been put back in the closet, you've gone to exchange what you did not want or like, gift cards have been spent, You've gone to the after Christmas sales. And for all intents and purposes, the season of Christmas has come and gone. But for the believer, for the Christian, we can have Christmas anytime. Because it's not a season of the year. It's not about trees and lights. It's not about presents and shopping. It's not about cranberry sauce and turkey. It's about a lamb being born. It's about God stepping out of eternity into human history. It's about a lamb 
promised, a lamb prepared, and a lamb provided. Which means truly you can have Christmas in July. You can have Christmas in August. Because it's about God doing a new thing under the heavens. That he becomes one of us. He empties himself into a body of weakness and death. He limits himself to time and space. He becomes what I am that I might become what he is. He becomes my salvation. He becomes my righteousness. He's the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. The text says, when Jesus was eight days old, he was circumcised. When you read from verse 21 through verse 38, which is the entirety of this passage, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised as prescribed by Leviticus at chapter 12. After 40 days, Mary has reached the end of her purification. For whenever a woman has been on her menstrual cycle or whenever a woman has given birth to a child, she cannot go inside the temple precincts for 40 days. And then she cannot enter the court of the men or the court of the priests or the court of the high priest. She's only allowed inside past the court of the Gentiles in the court of the women. She's only allowed there after her 40 days of purification. This has taken place. 40 days is now past. The child has been circumcised and the scripture says they are on the way to the temple. They make their way to the Lord's house. For Christ after eight days, Mary after 40 days must be redeemed. I want that to sit on you for a minute. That the Redeemer has to be redeemed. I don't think I got that over to you. He has to be redeemed. He has to go through the ritual law in order to fulfill prophecy that we might know that he is the Lord's Christ and our salvation. They make their way not to a bridal shower or a baby shower. They make their way not to a house of a friend, but they find their way to the house of God. Uh, and it doesn't have to be Christmas for you to find your way to the house of God because you know there are some seasonal Christians. Talk back to me if you can. <laughs> there are some believers who only make it Mother's Day, Easter, and Christmas. Seasonal believers who come to church two or three times a year. But when you are really God's child, you always make your way to the house of God. Because if you are sure enough a Christian, you love God's house. You love God's people. You love God's word. You love to have fellowship with the Father. If you belong to him. I, I, I know people. Who, who have business out of town that takes them out of town, but they make their way back to Houston because they want to go to church. Uh, they could very easily stay at their hotel or, or stay uh, out of town wherever they are and make their way back leisurely whenever they get ready. But it's something about the house of God. It's something about the church where you go. I wish I had a witness here. I, I visit other folks' churches and I preach in other people's pulpits, but it's nothing like going to the church where I go, fellowshipping with the people I fellowship with, praising God with the people I praise God with, sitting in the seat where you sit every Sunday to comfortably, reverently give God praise. And, and then there are some folk who get here long before church starts. 
Uh, because they want to settle down and quiet their mind and get their spirit right so that when church really gets started, they've already gotten started. You see, it takes some of us a while to get into service, but some of us have been here before church got started, so we brought the church with us, so we just join in with what's already been going on before the rest of us got here. Um, while they were there, a special event occurred. Two old saints of God. Simeon and Anna by the Holy Ghost go to the temple. <laughs> now, now it may not have been Simeon's time to minister because priests ministered all day without ending on a cycle, on a schedule and Simeon may not have been scheduled that day. But Jesus was coming that day. And so the Holy Ghost arranged for Simeon to be present that he might see the Lord's Christ and our salvation. That's why you ought to always let the Lord lead you when it comes to church. Because you don't know what word is going to be spoken. You don't know what special thing God is going to let take place in the worship that will speak particularly to your situation. I hear people say all the time, I thank God for that word. That word was just for me. If I had stayed home, I would have missed what God had to say just to me. You can't let people tell you what goes on in church when you're not here because it always loses something in translation. Have I got a witness here? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Listen, I don't need anybody doing all my praising for me. I, I don't want anybody doing all my shouting for me. I don't want anybody doing all my studying and reading and, and praying for me. I need to study the word for myself. Have I got a witness here? So that when the word is preached, I will shout on what I know. Because if your shout is just emotional, when your emotions are depressed, your shout is quiet. But when you praise God about what you know from his word, Oh, I wish I had time to stay right there. Uh, it, it may not have been Simeon's day to serve in the temple. Uh, you, you ought to come to church when you don't have to sing. Uh, you, have, you ought to come to church even when you don't have to greet. When you don't have to usher. When it's not your team on to pray. You just ought to be in the Lord's house. Because some special thing may just take place and you be absent. I wish I had a witness here. I, I, I don't want nobody telling me what went on at the service. I want to be in the service. I want to thank God for what he's done for me. Because you can't tell it like I can tell it. You can't praise God for me. You can't praise God at your house like you can at this church. Because the Holy Ghost promises to meet us here. Now, now, now let, me, let me say a word about the Holy Ghost before I move on. He doesn't come to make us talk in tongues. He doesn't come to make us roll all over the floor. Talk back to me if you can. But he comes to magnify Jesus. 
He comes to lift up. He comes to shine light on Jesus. And whenever Jesus is lifted up by the Holy Spirit, God is about to do something special in the life of the believer. What you've been praying about all 2013 might happen in this service this morning because the Holy Ghost let you get up to come and hear me say to you, you don't know what God's got in store for you. Uh, folk could be plotting on you at the job. And you at church praising God. And God has already went to your workplace and straightened out the situation that you might have to face in the morning. God can do that, you know. Folk in your family hope you don't make it. And they're already talking about you at breakfast right now. But here you are in the Lord's house giving God praise. And God has already frustrated their plans. They're trying to pull the rug out from under you. And you don't even know they're plotting and planning against you. You just at God's house praising the Lord. The Lord has already messed up the plans that they have for you. Because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. I wish I had a Bible reader. Plans to prosper you. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the way of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law does he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season, listen, and his leaf also shall not wither. Here it is. And whatever he does shall prosper. Have I got a witness? No weapon sown against you shall be able to prosper. I will keep him in perfect peace who has his mind stayed on me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He'll make your enemies your footstool. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. Come on, go to church, for they shall soon be cut off like grass. And they shall wither like the green earth. When, when they brought that baby. When, when they brought that 40 day old baby who's 40 days old but he's the ancient of days. He's 40 days old but he's older than his mother. Instead of the baby resembling his mother, the mother resembles the baby. If I had a chance, I would ask Mary, how did it feel to look down into heaven? If I had a chance to interview Mary, I would ask her, when Jesus saw a rainbow, did he ever say something about a flood? 
I would ask Mary, how did he react when he saw a lamb being led to the slaughter? That, that's another sermon. I don't, I don't have time for that. That's, that's just some interview questions I thought I would throw out there. But when they brought that 40-day-old baby and put him in that old man's hands, Simeon praised God because of who appeared. It's right in verses 26 through verse 30. He's not shouting because Joseph and Mary show up. You see, we get happy over the wrong stuff. We, we, we get all excited over the wrong people. I'm, I'm, finna, slip a, I'm finna slip a Mickey in your drink. Uh, I'm, I'm finna put a date rape drug in your, in, in your drink. You only shout when I preach. That's getting excited over the wrong stuff. Do you not know that some folk drive by and if they don't see my car, they keep driving? How immature. How childish of you. You getting happy over the wrong person. It's not about the pastor, it's about the master. Simeon didn't get excited because Mary and Joseph showed up, but when they put that baby in his arms, he praised God for who appeared. Now, now hear me. The name Simeon means one who hears. And if you're going to hear, that means you got to listen. Because God is always speaking. God is always saying something. God is saying, don't do this. Or hurry and go do that. God is always saying something. So like Simeon, we ought to keep our ears attuned to the Holy Spirit because many of us are listening to too many voices. And then we are listening to the wrong voices. I wish I had somebody to help me here. See, society will tell you what you ought to wear and what you ought to have and, and, and what, what makes one successful and what makes you popular. And if you listen to that mess, you'll be running after fads and fashions and trying to keep up with folk you don't like and trying to be around people you think are important because you're listening to the wrong voices. Come on, help me preach if you can. I'm, I'm, and sometimes those voices are in your house in your circle of friends. It could be a husband or a wife or a friend or a sister or a brother, somebody who does not have your best interests at heart because anybody who loves you wants you to hear God. Well, I wish I had my 730 cry. And anybody who does not want you to hear God should not be in your concentric circle of concern. I'm, I'm like, I, I haven't always been like this, but the older I get, the more I get like Samuel. Samuel in the Old Testament says, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. I, I haven't always heard God. Sometimes I thought I heard him when it wasn't God. Somebody ought to help me preach right here. Uh, you, you know, I'm not like these spiritual people who, who answer their phone, praise the Lord. And, and the Lord tell them what to eat for breakfast. And, and the Lord tells them what street to turn on off of 610. I'm not talking about that. God, God ain't talking like that. That's, 
that's, that's your feelings. And feelings ain't got nothing to do with doctrine. Your, 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 your feelings, your emotions have nothing to do with truth. Because it doesn't matter how you feel about the truth. It's the truth whether you like it or not. But when God is speaking, he's always telling you what's right. When the Holy Ghost is speaking, he's always directing you to magnify Jesus in your conversation, in your walk, in your associations around you. If it's the Lord talking to you, he will always magnify Jesus in your life. Uh, he, he, he prays him because... He's God in human flesh. He prays him because he's God, the lamb, slain before the foundation of the world. He prays him because he's the only way sinners can be saved. He calls him the Lord's Christ and our salvation. Jesus is not one of the ways to get to God. He's the only way. I wish I had somebody to help me. I say that with some exclusivity. That the wages of sin is death. And the free gift of God is eternal life. Now, you're going to get mad with me for what I'm about to say. <laughs> but you know I don't care nothing about that. I've been trying all I know how to find a reason to disagree with Phil Robertson and the Duck Dynasty clan. I've been turning it over and, and, and twisting it around and flipping it backwards and forwards, trying to find a way to get mad. But I can't get mad with the word. I can't get mad with the truth. See how quiet you're getting right there? You see, this, this culture, this society is not so upset with him about what he said about black folk. They don't care nothing about black folk because we don't matter in the grand scheme of things. They have set up him with, with him about what he said about homosexuality, which is what the Bible says about homosexuality. And I agree not with what Phil Robertson says, but with what the Bible said. And then I was trying to get mad with the second part of his statement about us being happy before civil rights and before welfare. I thought about that. We were happy when I could go to Miss Lily's house and get two sticks of butter. My daddy would kill a hog and send some pig's feet down the street. And we were not connected to anybody else but ourselves. We did not, some of us may have come from broken homes, but we didn't come from broken families because the community raised us. People who were not related to us could tell us right from wrong. Have I got a witness here? And we went to church more. We praise God more before we had two cars in the garage, before we had money in the bank. But now that God has blessed us, some of you have sit through an entire worship and haven't opened your mouth yet. Negro, please. Who woke you up this morning? Who gave you that job? that you should have been fired from? Who gave you the house that you didn't qualify for? You riding in a car that you aren't even on. You are I wish I had a witness here. You are drinking from wells that you have not dug. It was nobody but the Lord. And there was a time when we shouted about that. Some of y'all got too cute to shout. You got too many degrees to shout. 
You got too many cars to shout. You working around too many white folk to shout. But I wish I had somebody who could come back here and meet us and know that everything we got comes from the Lord. Have I got a witness here? The neighborhood you living in, there was a time you couldn't live in that neighborhood. It was nobody but the Lord who opened doors that used to be closed in your face. Don't you forget where you came from. Don't forget about what used to make you shout. I say with some exclusivity that there's no other way to get to God but through Jesus Christ. I said I say with some exclusivity that there's no other way to get to God but through Jesus Christ. The Pope who is being celebrated uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting on everybody this morning. Uh, the Pope who is Time Magazine's Man of the Year. The Pope, the, 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 the titular head of the Roman Church. The Vicar of Christ. Who stands, according to doctrine in their faith, in the footsteps of Peter. Says that you don't have to be Christian to go to heaven. He says you can be atheist. Just be a good person. Read it. Read, read, read some of his comments. And when he talks about homosexuality, that's why they, they, they're jumping on his bandwagon. Because he's saying that who am I to judge? You are nobody, your holiness. The book judges us. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. And the Bible says, I am, talking about Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. That's a definite article meaning there can be nobody else. Now, I look like y'all kind of ashamed to talk about that. And y'all kind of embarrassed about what I'm talking about. And you, you backing up and you saying, Reverend, get on to your next point. No, I'm going to stay right here a minute. I believe the Bible. I'm on the Lord's side. I don't care what President Obama says. I don't care, I don't care what uh, Pope Benedict says. I am on the Lord's side. I don't care what Pope Francis says. I don't care what Pope John Paul says. I am on the Lord's side. We praise him because who appeared? And then verse 30 and 32 tells us that he praised him because of why he arrived. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Wish I had a witness here. Which thou hast prepared for the, before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. He came to save us because without Christ you are hopelessly lost. Without a hope in Jesus Christ you're on your way to hell. Talk back to me if you can. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care how big your house, without Jesus Christ, without a hope in him for your salvation, you're on your way to hell. There's no good people in the world. I don't care how sweet you are. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how good people say you are. You're not good enough to go to heaven. You will never be good enough to merit salvation. God had to give it to us. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? God had to send it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. There's no good thing you can do to inherit the kingdom of God. There's no way that you can ever measure up. So God had to come down because you couldn't come up. I, I, I see you. I see you proud Lily Grove member. 
been here 47 years that ain't long enough come on talk back to me if you can been singing in the choir since you were a child that ain't long enough you've been a nice person you've been treating people right you ain't been sweet enough you haven't been nice enough there's nothing you can do to merit God's favor that's why it's called grace because grace is unmerited favor. Have I got a witness here? And then as I hurry to the close, he, he, he's praising God because of what Jesus in verse 34 and verse 35 accomplished. It's right in the text. He is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. Th those two verses tell us three things about our Messiah. He's a stone He's a sign, and he's a sword. It's right here in the text. He's a stone, a stone of rejection, a stone of conviction, a stone of stumbling. Because people who can't accept Jesus as the Son of God to save us from sin stumble over that he's a stone of offense he's a stone of stumbling he's a rejected stone I need a bible reader here uh, Peter says he, he he's a rejected stone a stone of stumbling a stone of offense he's a rejected stone but He's become the chief cornerstone. Now, to the Greek, it's foolishness. To the Jew, it's a stumbling block. But to us who are being saved, he's not a stone of rejection. He's not a stone of conviction. He is our tried stone. He is our chief corner stone. He's the stone that we stand on. Because you remember what happened one Friday? I wish I had somebody to help me preach. He's our rock, you know. And one Friday, they hung him on the cross. I need two or three Bible readers. And when they took him down from the cross, they put him in the tomb, the rock-hewn tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea took down a rock and put him inside a rock. And that rock of offense has become the rock of my salvation. And then he's a sign. Jesus is a miracle. I said Jesus is a miracle. Because he's born without the aid of a man's seed. That's a miracle. A virgin shall bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. For he shall save his people from their sins. God with us. A sign that he is God's miracle. And everybody in here saved this morning is God's miracle. Where you came from, what you've been through, the stuff that should have killed you, and you still alive to give God praise? That's a miracle. I wish I had one or two more believers. With your background, with your pedigree, with your resume, and God let you teach Sunday school, God let you preach his word, God lets you praise him, that's a miracle. 
Now it's only a miracle for those of us who realize how low down we really are. And the reason some of you can't give God praise right now is because you think you're still pretty good. But there's about 125 of us in here this morning who know that if God pulled the cover off us, everybody would see us for what we really are. I got some decisions I wish I hadn't made. There's some things in my past I wish I could go back and undo. There's some skeletons in my closet that if the door would open, all of them would fall out and you would see me for what I really am. But grace, mercy, I wish I had a witness, and the goodness of God, he looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. But I've got to hurry to the close. Not only is he a stone, not only is he a sign, but the Bible says he's a soul that will pierce Mary's heart for she will watch him die on the cross. But he's a sword that cuts between the marrow and the bone. It's a sword that comes to separate fathers from sons, mothers from daughters. It's a sword that comes to cut off from us what does not please God. Have I got a witness here? I'm asking God every day, what else, whatever does not give you glory, cut it off from my life. Use the sword of your word. If it's some friends I don't need in my company, cut them off from my life. If it's some family members who don't mean me any good, help me love them from a distance. Somebody ought to help me preach it. If it's something I'm involved in that does not give honor to your name, cut it off from my life right now because I want to give you glory in my life. I want your name to shine in my testimony. I want people to look at me and see Jesus in my life. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here? willing to help me praise God right now because of who he is and for what he has accomplished now listen your praise has got to be visible you can't just sit there and nod your head you've got to visibly tell God thank you in your body language you've got to show God visibly the scripture says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. And then your worship has got to be vocal. You've got to make a joyful noise. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. And it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You're going to help me say it right now, won't you? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together here it is oh taste and see that the Lord is good if the Lord been good to you help me magnify his name if the Lord open doors for you, help me magnify his name. If the Lord kept you through January, 
February and March, April and May, June and July, August and September, October and November. And here it is, the last Sunday in December. I still got food on my table. I still got clothes on my back. I still got my health and my strength. I still got friends to love me. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell them the Lord has been good to me. I'm a praise him. I'm a praise him. I'm a praise him. I'm a praise him. While I have a chance. I know he's all right. I'm going to lift him up. I'm a magnified name. If you don't want to raise your hands, I will. If you don't want to tell him thank you, I will. If you don't want to magnify him, I will. If you don't want to glorify him, I will. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell him you don't know like I know what the Lord what the Lord I know he's alright Thank you, Holy Ghost. The, the, the Holy Ghost just gave me this. Simeon didn't get happy till he took that baby in his arm. And you won't get happy until you take that baby in your arm. Until he's close to you and you close to him, then you can testify. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. A light to the Gentiles and a glory to Israel. 